Hi, my name is Brandon, and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. The last few days, I've been going over the yamas that have been laid out in Recovery 2.0 by Tommy Rosen. And the yamas are yogic principles and guidelines about how we relate to the external world in order to strengthen our foundation that we have from the 12 steps. Uh, and starting today, I'm going to look at the Nayamas, uh, and these are five observances that guide us in our relationship with our internal world. And we're starting with sh uh, Shacha, and I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but Shacha means purity or cleanliness of the body of, and mind. So reading from Recovery 2.0, Tommy says, it also has to do with keeping a sacred quality to the environment around you, such as your home, bedroom, office, and so on. So one of the, uh, I'm going to stop right there and say, one of the first lessons that I learned in recovery was when I was at a treatment center and was told that every day I needed to get up and first thing in the morning make my bed. And that's something that I've always had an issue with. Why make my bed in the morning? I'm just going to go back to sleep in it at night. But this is aligned with the principle of Shacha. Um, and it is about making your uh, space that you inhabit, caring for it, taking taking care to make sure that it looks uh, clean and that it's, you know, if you think about it, if you leave your bed unmade all day long, then dust is just going to collect on the sheets. And you really shouldn't be sleeping in dust. You should be sleeping in clean sheets. So it's a logical thing to do to make your bed. But most of us, when we're in our addiction, we don't even think about that kind of stuff. It's not something that's important to us. So we start caring for not only the way things are presented around us, but the way that we have our rooms organized and uh, making sure that we've got things clean. And this is actually helpful because it starts to decrease stress. When things are clean around us, we start to notice that our stress level goes down, or at least I have. So he goes on to talk about the our, our hygiene, and he says, We've been so disconnected in our addictions, now we want to connect. Our quest is to connect with our heart, which is connected with our highest self, which is connected to our higher power. We bathe every day. We brush our teeth and floss. Many of us have forsaken these practices through our addictions. And I, I was one of those people. I was terrible about brushing my teeth. Not in the morning. I typically brush my teeth in the morning. But I'll be honest, I, I went through a long period of my life where I didn't brush at night. And you might feel like that's disgusting because it is. Um, you, sh you should take care of your teeth. And because I didn't take care of my teeth and my addiction, once I started taking care of them in recovery, I found out I developed a gum disease that's been very expensive to try to get rid of. Now I'm taking very good care of my teeth. And, it, and not only that, I'm taking care of other things in health that I really had not paid much attention to. And... This is something that a lot of us in addiction do. We just do not take care of our hygiene. And it's a, it's a result of, uh, in some ways, not uh, focusing our energy in that direction. But in other ways, it's that uh, we, we our, our poor self-image, I think, also contributes to that. So in recovery, it's important to start looking at that as a way to get us closer to our ideal selves uh, without having pride enter the equation. You know, it's not prideful to clean yourself. Um, that That is, in fact, taking the time to make sure that you are a clean person is, is a humbling act in some ways. And so, um, so that's an important part of this. He also talks about food, and here's what he says there. We also improve our relationship with food, eating healthier, nutrient-dense, alkalizing foods, and letting go of junk food and overconsumption. 
So that's been a hard one for me. Um, when I first got into recovery, I was eating a lot of junk food. I was eating a lot of fast food. A big part of this was that the pandemic hit right at the beginning of my recovery journey. And I found myself working from home and stressed uh, about the about the pandemic. And b- partly because I didn't have an outlet for that stress, I would turn to junk food a lot of the times. And, um, you know, I would find myself eating pizza multiple times a week and um, going and grabbing tacos for lunch every other day. And it really had a negative impact on my body. I gained an enormous amount of weight. I started seeing some very bad health effects and realized at one point that I didn't need to go on a diet. I didn't need to get more exercise. I needed to change my relationship with food and movement. And that was a big shift and it took a while. Um, and I'm still working on a couple of things that I, I need to change my relationship with, but I had to really attune myself. And he talks about attunement here as well. I had to attune myself with what am I trying to, what am I doing with my body? I'm putting a bunch of junk in and it's, it's, I'm, I'm not feeling the way that I hope to feel in recovery. So I started eating a lot more lean protein. I stopped eating uh, as many carbs and I started loading my plates with vegetables of all different colors and eating less in the evenings um, uh, and and, uh, snacking on healthy things like nuts and fruit during the afternoon. I started to um, increase my time outside. So I started to go on walks on a regular basis. And I didn't do anything crazy. I'd just take a 15-minute break from work and go on a walk around the block. But pretty soon, I started feeling like I wanted more than that. So I started jogging. And that turned into uh, daily jogs. And before I knew it, weight was starting to come off and I felt better. I was sleeping better. I, I would get tired at night. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's still not perfect. I still have days where I use food to help me deal with emotions. That's not a good thing. Um, I really should should address that. And, and I'm cognizant of it. And it's something that I'm working on. And that's what Tommy gets to in one of the last paragraphs I read, I'll read, which where he says, remember, we improve over time. These are not all overnight shifts we can hope to make. In our early recovery, we remember that our program meetings and step work comes first. Later on in recovery, we will likely realize there there are things that we need to change to continue down the path to contentment and fulfillment. So that really comes back to the AA idea of progress, not perfection. And I have so many times in my recovery been so hard on myself for not doing things perfectly, for not being a 100% nutritious eater and for not exercising the way I should and for not doing, not being able to, um, avoid ice cream at the end of the, at the end of the night, you know, and I've had to tell myself, I, I, I just look at what I've done that day and say, have you made progress today? And if I've made progress, then as far as I'm concerned, that's okay. Um, because little by little that progress adds up. And if I look back at the overall progress I've made in two years, I feel like it's very substantial. Um, I feel like I've progressed more in the last two years than I have in the previous 20 years of my adult life, um, where I just was kind of all over the place and honestly kind of just felt like I was slipping backwards all the time. So, Don't get discouraged about it, but I think being cognizant of the changes that are helpful to make to get us closer to a place where we're really, really starting to get toward a cleaner way of living in our hygiene, in food, and in our overall health, 
that's something that should always be on our mind as we're moving through the stages of recovery. That's it for today. I'll be back here tomorrow with more. Have a good one.